Okay, I'd like to call to order the September 16th, 2014 Statesboro City Council meeting, and I would like to ask Councilman Gary Lewis to please lead us in our invocation and pledge of allegiance. Let us pray, please. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking you to lead us and guide us to where you have us to go. Father, we also ask you to be a fence around us and protect us with your love and arms. We ask you to take whatever problems the city may be plagued with today at the University of Georgia Southern. The University of Georgia Southern may be plagued with. We give it to you right now. We let you handle the problem there because we know that you're too wise to make a mistake and too just to do wrong. Father, we thank you for everything. Watch over our troops who are protecting this country. Watch over the police, my law enforcement, for city, county, and state protecting us. And all these best we ask in your son, Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I guess you know you're getting old when uh, I had to turn to my left and ask Councilman Riggs what O N W meant. Which was O T W. No, no, no. On my way. Oh, my way. It was on my way from Councilman uh, Royal. So, <laughs> I didn't know what was wrong with it. Had to get a little advice on that one. Okay, um, we're going to begin after invocation and pledge with agenda item number three, which is recognitions and public presentations. Uh, this is a presentation of Adopt a Spot, um, which I'm going to ask Jason Boyles to please just talk about. Yes, Councilman Boyum. Thank you, sir. Councilman Boyum and City Manager and myself have been talking for a while trying to come up with a program uh, in which we can get some engage some public participation to help us maintain some of our public facilities, some of our grounds. Um, here recently, um, Mr. Steve Brown with Downtown Rotary Club uh, come to us um, seeking to participate in such a program with us. Uh, so together, Steve and I worked on developing some of the paperwork. And then I went back and uh, worked with Councilman Boyum to help finalize that paperwork. And um, I just want to like, recognize Mr. Steve Morrell, Downtown Rotary Club. Do so, you have anything you want to add to that or speak on that? Thank you, Mr. Royals. I'm Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council. Downtown Rotary Club has been taking care of the Mattel Trail for a couple of years now. And um, we, um, in recognition of that, and, Important work that our club is doing in service of itself. So, uh, our past president um, is here today, um, uh, Mr. Heather Campbell, and our, our future president, Tim Salter, is here. Uh, also, I'd like to mention that Alan Walter uh, took us under the wing also as a member of our club. Uh, we look forward to the opportunity to pioneer a program for this city um, in which community uh, entities can be recognized officially by the city. Perhaps we can pay for a sign to be put up to recognize uh, our folks' contributions to that and to uh, adopt, if you will, a uh, motel trail uh, through our service, uh, which would include things like uh, picking up trash, which we've done on a quarterly basis for the last years, and other work perhaps that the city would want us to do, spreading mulch, planting trees, or whatever that seems appropriate. Um, so we thank you for that opportunity to be here today. So uh, let me ask real quickly, because uh, when Councilman Boyd explained this to me, so I want to make sure everybody understands that a local business can adopt an area to keep clean and signage would then go up and provisions would be made for that, or how exactly does it work? Correct. Um, our new adoptive slot program would allow anyone in the city from the public or business owner as it may to adopt a um, public facility, like adopt a highway, um, adopt a park, or adopt any particular location like uh, police department, fire department grounds, et cetera, uh, city hall grounds, and help, and so as Mr. Burrell talked about, to, um, to work in partnership with the city, you know, hopefully on, as a minimum, uh, on a quarterly basis, um, but hopefully if we've got some groups that are, that have um, uh, maybe a Attorney Sorority that has a larger group, um, maybe want to participate in like a rotation type period, maybe on a monthly basis, um, just to help maintain the grounds, um, 
perhaps even maybe make a financial contribution to, to a facility, to a park, and, um, and just so we can work together in partnership. So if somebody wants to do that, who do they call? Uh, they can contact me uh, okay. at Public Works. That's 640681. And i um, be happy to uh, work with them through the paperwork process and help the adopt the site. Okay. Thank you. And this is uh this is the Thursday rubbery? This is the downtown rubbery. Thir it was just Thursday rubbery, not Monday. Thursday morning. Gotcha. Say you're gonna be there this time. He's out of town just to let you know, so go ahead and find him. <laughs> <laughs> Put his money in the car bucket. <laughs> but now, John, you could go in this place. Uh, so I don't, I don't, think, that's, I think, I don't think that's allowed. We've got some pretty strict rules about <laughs> my tenure. They don't work. They work. <laughs> <laughs> well, find him extra for even that. We're even next time. Uh, let's see, do we have anybody that's asked to make a public comment? No. Okay, we'll move to. Agenda item five, which is a consideration of a motion to approve the consent agenda. Uh, we'll give council a minute to look through that consent agenda and then ask for a motion. Okay, and uh, City Manager Cheshire said to please point out to you all to make sure you know item C which is a consideration of a motion to approve resolution 2014-31, which is setting the millage rate uh, for the current tax 2014 calendar year at 6.358, which is where it sits. Scott? Most of this may then. I, I, I move to approve A, B, and D. We'll see out separately. Okay. Just have a reading on it and say what we did. And, uh, so. Okay. Second. C will be moved. Okay. Hang on real quick before we do that. So we'll move C to item. Before six or at the end? Let's move at the end. We'll put it after item 15. So it will become item 16. Okay. Then do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda without item C, please? Yes, ma'am. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Consent agenda passes without item C to be moved to item 15 or 16, whichever we decided. All right, agenda item 6 is a public hearing in consideration of a motion to approve application RZ 1406 02. Um, LNS Acquisitions LLC and CFM Partners LLC request a zoning map amendment. Uh, I'm going to ask our Director of Planning, Mandy Cody, to please discuss this. Thank you, Mayor. This is a parcel of property that is approximately 61 acres in size that is located adjacent to the SNS Railroad bed. Also our, our trail that goes there is behind Bradford Place um, subdivision which is located in the county. We've shown that in your packet as well as on the screen today. This parcel was annexed into the city limits um, in July of last year, just over a year ago. It was zoned uh, R10 single family residential with 10,000 square foot minimum lot sizes and our eight single family uh, zones, 8,000 square foot lot sizes. This application has asked for a rezone to a planned unit development to allow for various structure styles um, and different housing styles to be constructed um, in this property, which of course would need to be subdivided out um, for such. The R10 and the R8 uh, zones only allow for detached single family residential units to be constructed. Those are what we typically think of as a traditional single family home. The applicant is expressing a desire to um, have other structure options available for this development, including attached single family dwellings, which we would commonly think of as a townhome, a condo, a brownstone, a row house, um, those sorts of things. They're also asking for the permission to have assisted living facilities as a use by right in this particular location. Having that um, combination of structure types is what really necessitated them asking for a planning unit development, and we worked with them on that particular act. I want to point out that they could have asked for an R4, which is our high density zoning, uh, that does allow for the variations in structure types. It also allows for much 
of higher density than the single family zones which are currently in place. We did put in your packet the conditions which the property was annexed and zoned into the city about uh, a year ago. And we've reviewed the comprehensive plan, uh, the ideology behind annexing this property, which in, in part was to prepare. The city is growing, as many of you know, we increased in population by 25% between the last two census. And we are quickly filling our single family zoning districts and into build out. Those two things um, really prompted us to look at a variety of housing styles for a growing and dynamic population coming into our city. And we reviewed that for you in the comprehensive plan and the proposed update to the comprehensive plan. And we've outlined that in your analysis for your, um, for your packet this evening. We have also visited this property through our utilities. You approved the extension of water sewer to this property um, just a couple of meetings ago. So that this, and this follows the policy both with utility expansion and the comprehensive plan to, to extend our, our services out um, into areas that are not served and are continuing to serve you. We did um, offer a number of conditions on this development. We, and we have spelled those out for you. We reviewed this pursuant to the terms of the zoning ordinance back in 2007 in particular. We also presented this particular case to the Planning Commission um, last week, and the members of the Planning Commission did recommend unanimously to um, adopt the recommendations of the staff to rezone this to plan unit development with the conditions that are spelled out in the staff report. Um, with that, I'll be happy to take any more specific questions you would like to discuss. Do we have anybody to speak for the project? Yes, ma'am, the applicant's representative. Oh, Mr. Dotson. How are you? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good to see you. Good to see you. My name is John Dotson. I'm the firm here in Statesburg, representing the <coughs> purchase of this property. You'll see on the screen, um, it appears it's two separate tracks, but it is 168 parcel, but it is divided by wetlands. So this could be developed as two separate tracks or a number of the reason we're asking for the uh, demanding um, have a statement somewhere open in the market is to create a non-traditional subdivision. This is not going to be along the lines of that space for Mary Wood and Delaware. It will be more along the lines of cluster homes. You have a lot of strand by the new space, but you number of ways to do it. Um, we're okay with all the conditions, but then we had asked With the current zoning, Randy, how many bedrooms have they constructed? Did they change it? We, they've only changed it by 10%. They've, they've taken the current zoning, we did the math, Kelsey, that's a good question, and they've asked for 10% over what the property would currently hold density wise under its zoning today. Uh, Planning Commission did recommend a, a, an approval of that. We looked at it staff, we can service that without. And this is this is single story instead of multiple stories, or is this? It, it could be two stories. You could have townhomes that in the middle, but not not apartments. No, it's not apartment buildings. It's not affordable. That that is not very cheap. So that ten percent density increase, that according to the staff recommendation, that is not going to. Be juxtaposed with what the capital cost recovery area was intended to do? It could, Mayor. That is unclear to me. There is some language of the capital cost recovery area, which is the intergovernmental agreement between the city of Statesboro and Bullock County that talks about utility extensions and annexations and zoning in this particular area that alludes to an, an intention of zoning at R15. Um, that intention, it was presented to me when I, I was not here at the time that that contract was entered into and it was always presented to me as if R15 was the only zoning intended for this particular district. 
I don't personally read that paragraph that way. I read it to say R15 around particular commercial nodes. So I'm not clear as to whether this would contradict or not that particular provision of the capital cost recovery area. And so is this intended to be sold and are we thinking rental? Are we thinking home? It could be a combination of both. It is not it is not intended to be an apartment project unit. It is intended to be homes geared more towards young professionals or people driving those that people are getting to the point where they don't maintain the other It it could be a combination of all of them. I mean it is not intended to be an apartment project. Okay, but it's not it's you're not ruling out selling it for rental and investment property either, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Okay. That would be a little bit I'm not saying yeah or nay, opinion wise for me personally, I'm just saying that would be different from current surrounding use. Because we have neighborhoods in there that are not are intended to be rental neighborhoods per se from the get go, but I'm sure there's some rental in some of them. Exactly. Absolutely. I mean Bradley Place is a prime example. It was originally developed as a single family home. I have no idea how many units in there that way. For one thing too, this is very well protected. You have pretty good luck with the weapons that are on Bradley Place and on this property to protect that. Can you show me, do you mind John, go to there and show us what that buffer, what you feel like the buffer would be? Explain the buffer around the property. You know, I know the road buffers some of it, railroad, bed road. That is correct. The wetlands is buffering the whole back, correct? That's correct, yes ma'am. So none of that could be developed, the green space in between there and Bradley Place? I know, no ma'am, it could. I mean it would be well within this undeveloped. Could you go through a process and have permits and all that? If you have enough time and money, yes ma'am, but no ma'am, that is not the intent of this. We don't want to go there. Basically you would leave, the wetlands are further down from below the field, what you see in the middle, but basically you would leave the wetlands as they are, undisturbed, and part of your green space requirements, your tree requirements, that kind of thing, but you would leave it in place to have this buffer all along the southern and the boundaries. Now the railroad bed has no green, has no bed space or plantings along it, which is a point, I don't know whether to offer to put something there or leave it open. I mean you could very well landscape it. The walking trail adds a great deal to this property, and the access points on the sketch that was in your packet takes into consideration the current crossings that are there, and any other access points would have to be worked out between the city and the county. Is there anyone here to speak against the project? Thank you, John. Okay, do I have any more questions from council? Yes, ma'am. One of the things that was mentioned, and Andy mentioned it, was the intergovernmental agreement. This is something that we've kind of, I guess we've talked about, but we haven't really, I guess we go back to trying to lay blame on everybody. Moving forward, what is our plan? Because we haven't had a meeting between us and the county on this project, have we? We have not had that meeting as of yet. We have attempted to have that meeting, and there is one scheduled, a staff level meeting is scheduled for tomorrow afternoon. Okay, that's cool. That's bad. That's great. So, does that mean that, I mean, before we zone that, we need to have that meeting? Or is it back? Just because we're going to have a meeting and say, hey, by the way, this is what we did yesterday, I'm not sure that constitutes the spirit of the intergovernmental agreement. I think it's better than what we've done in the past a little bit, so we're moving forward. This particular application first came to us, Councilman, in June, I believe, and I had a conversation with the county, and some written communications with the county in late June and early July, notifying them of this rezone application. And we've only heard from them in the last couple of weeks, and unfortunately we weren't able to get our schedules together to have that meeting. So, to try to be respectful of both the timeline that the applicant came to us some time ago, 
and our responsibilities under this particular agreement, I've included a condition um, in the staff report that, that sort of sums it up and says any requirements of the capital cost recovery agreement would have to be adhered to and we try to capture that subdivision planning stages um, of this property and any permitting. But, but that's a good question and we can handle that in a number of ways. Well, I go back to the, I kind of go back to what Councilman Britt is saying, which is if we're going to adhere to the spirit of it, which we haven't, and we're trying to do that, what would be the best way to go forward? We certainly don't want to penalize the applicant if Council feels like this is something that they would vote for. Um, however, or is it best practice not to have that conversation prior to approving it? And I'm going to ask City Manager Cheshire to yeah. respond to that because you're the one that has been having conversation with uh, County Manager Couch regarding this very specific issue. Yeah, and we have, but they've all been informal discussions. But like Ms. Cody said, we have notified them properly, but we have not had that meeting. We've had staff meeting, a uh, city staff meeting, and we've gone through it line by line trying to get an interpretation since I wasn't here or Ms. Cody was written, so I don't know the intent on some of it. And it started getting pretty deep pretty quick until we felt like we need to stop and have that meeting with the county. And it, I don't know that I have a recommendation because we've done so many of the other ones and not followed it. And now we're trying to follow it, but we're trying to also be good to the people that are the applicants in this case and not hold them up. So I do feel like we've made the proper um, notifications, we did. correspondence, and did not hear anything back objecting to it. We did not, and we didn't hear anything back for some time. Right, and, and, and we are only actually changing this from the way that it's owned by 10%. Yes, that's correct, only the So I think that is that's another thing that helps a little bit. You know, it's not like we're, we're going back to the county saying, hey, we're building, you know, a six-story building. I just want to let y'all know that's cool, right? Right, and we put so, up. And, and we had a good discussion, myself and Ms. Cody and staff, which was a lot of their connectivity with sidewalks, mm -hmm. um, reserved green space, connectivity to Sally, Sally Zetterauer School, and the trail. this property and the next one, the trail itself. So we, we tried to utilize what we felt like was some of the intent of the CCR, but to meet it line by line, I, I can't say that we have. So we can say that their phone equals our phone and we're all even now. <laughs> 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 they did their part without us, we did our part without them. Alright, so cut equals put, moving on. Um, so we have made an attempt to, to have the discussion and that was correct. I, I feel confident. So. And there was no, no, nobody came back and said we got a problem, let's sit down with this. Right. I feel different if we had gotten something in writing or even just a phone call saying, that they, they opposed, you know, absolutely, but that hasn't been the case. Right, and the, the only the only comment that I've ever seen ever have knowledge about was a general comment about a joint planning session, which is within the spirit of the of the contract. And I think one thing going forward, you know, it's kind of first come, first get, but one thing we're going to have to consider going forward is if we, if we continue to allow these higher density developments than what was initially planned along railroad bed road we're going to have to be cognizant of the fact this is a walking trail and if we keep adding higher density to that walking trail and people are trying to walk and people coming in and out of there um, we're going to have to be thinking about that and saying that maybe it's allowed here but are you setting a precedent by having high density all the way down and that's you know that's fairly high density there um, all the way down the trail so i'm just going to say be mindful of that as we because this area clearly is going to develop. There's well, no reason to think that it won't. And this point seems to, in particular, come up every time we start talking about a planned urban development. It just seems like we're using that mechanism to cram in as much as we can and then surround it by unusual wetlands. When I was under the impression that in a planned urban development, the idea is to trade off density for usable green space, not just a swamp that nobody can walk in. Well, I think that our zoning ordinance says that the intention of the plan unit development is to offer flexibility in zoning when one of your standard districts really does not fit the need at a particular time. 
So that's what I think we've tried to do. We've worked with the applicant closely to try to achieve that, and that, that's the list of conditions that does reserve green space. None of our standard zoning districts require reservation of green space or require interconnectivity by sidewalk um, within, the, within the development as well as to the school and the nearby the trail. And we did add some, some of those particular conditions um, in exchange for the PUD. And, and I would, the, the density here is so much less than say our R4 could have been, which was well over 900 beds. We're less than 300 beds. So we're still at a third of what a high density zoning would have allowed by right. So uh, in some respects, Council, I think we, we've come closer to the intent of a PUD here than maybe we have in the past. You know, and then the other concern is something the mayor said, you know, we're going to systematically change the you know, feel of that walking trail with, you know, when you say a thousand car trips, you're going to have 600 coming out of one and 400 a day coming out of that in and out. And it's probably going to, let's face it, it's probably going to end up being more than that. I think transportation um, planning is going to be critical in our conversations with, with the county mm -hmm. and with the roads. Uh, we all know that there are issues in that particular area that need to be addressed and the development of this area is going to bring that even closer. Um, anybody who sat at Burkhalter and Bay Road at 8 o'clock in the morning, you know, what's that going to do to that particular intersection? So it's not just this road, it's Kiwana Road, all the traffic that's up and down by elementary school, plus what's that intersection will probably need to be addressed. I mean, we're going to back up the traffic all the way to Kiwana Road, probably further than that. And as it looks, I mean, there's no reason to believe that this area is not going to develop. There's no reason to believe that this area isn't the next place to go and be desirable to develop. So that may, you know, that may be one of the things that we do in our conversation with the county is say, hey, we got to sit down and figure out what the, the, the connectivity of the transportation needs to look like five years from now in this area, and, you know, some it's going to be county road, some it's going to be city road, but we got to come together and figure it out because you know, it's clearly going to be crowded. So. I don't see a beach in the house. Do we have a beach in the house? No. Okay. Do I have any other questions from council? The, the staff recommendations and the planning and commission recommendations are the same. Yes, sir. I scrolled through it. I think I saw the thoughts of it. Yes, do we have some discussion as planning commission works some things out and the ones that are the conditions recommended to you in your staff report are the agreed upon? Uh, do you know how many trips this is going to generate today? How many, how many units is this? This is memory serves as 268 units. Well, not coming before us, it would be 240. Right. Correct. So, so we're not we're not really in a debate of are we going to be able to develop this or not develop this. It's just a question of it. To trade off the 11 recommendations, you want 26 more houses, great. You got to do 11 things, and then we end up with a better product. They end up with a few more to make pay for the better product. Is what I would assume like you would agree to. It. And then at that point, I think we can. Do it. Now, if we wanted to get into a discussion at some point that says this is too much, period, I think that's a that's a discussion we needed to have had six months ago or tomorrow morning. Uh, and, and maybe that's what we do. And I don't know, you know what we want to do forward, but I think none of us would prefer all of us to do that. Yeah, I don't know that it applies to this particular parcel. I'm with you. I don't know. I do think it needs to be something looked at. Oh, I do too. And the only thing I would ask is, you know, what, how many entrances in and out of this are there going to be? It looks like two. Correct. There are two median cuts. Two median cuts. There may need to be more, and then that's something we can work with the city and the county on, because it's critical there that there is a county that can go to I don't understand it. Well, that would, that would be the one concern I would have, is that, Two cuts out of here. If you start getting the three and four cuts, and you got that much traffic coming over the walkway, I think that's a problem. 
Is that possible to put that as a condition? It is. Mm -hmm. I think we need, is it, it only it two is. cuts and that's it? Well, it is, yeah. but we have to agree and the county has to agree on the number of cuts. Okay. So if we are already saying two, then, you know, as long as the county doesn't say one, <laughs> I guess they got to build a bridge. <laughs> okay. Okay. But absolutely. Okay, do I have a motion to approve, a motion from council to approve application RZ 140602? Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please state by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? I have six passes. For the record, Councilman, that was with conditions? With the conditions listed. Thank you. Okay. Item 7, public hearing and consideration of a motion to approve application RZ 140802. A zoning map amendment pursuant to the state's presenting ordinance from R3 and R10 districts to apply. Uh, Mandy, could you please talk to us about this one? Yes, ma'am. This is an adjacent piece of property. Very similar history. We, we annexed and zoned this piece of property um, at, around the same time as the one that we just discussed. It is, this is the one that is more um, adjacent to the Valley Clearwater Elementary School. We, most, we zoned this particular parcel a number of different districts. The portion of the parcel, and I apologize if it's not clear to you on this map, that this particular request will apply to is zoned R10 and a bit R3. It's a very similar request to the one that we just visited to rezone from the single family districts, which allow only for detached single family traditional single homes to be built to a PUD to allow for essentially the same density as allowed by right now, but in a cluster development. We have reviewed this um, again under our comprehensive plan, our proposed update to that plan, the CCR agreement. Um, and with our development team, this is one of those cases that will need to be discussed with the county in a joint planning session. We visited this with the planning commission at last week's meeting, and they did recommend approval of the rezone to plan unit development with the staff recommendations that are outlined for you in the report. I do know that there are representatives of the application here tonight to speak with you all, and I'll be happy to take any additional questions you may have. Okay, and who is representing? I don't want to get this. And you, and, and you are? <laughs> I'm John Dotson. Um, we're asking for the same, same zone on this track, but it's a, a little, it's a little bit different. Um, again, we did ask for a 5% component density on this. The drawing that you see in your packet um, shows 176 units when you take We've already drawn it and worked the numbers out to come up with 168. So that's just necessitating the long steps there now. I will point out the plan that. Is that when you include the wetlands or not? I'm sorry? Is that including the acreage of wetlands? 30, yes, sir. when you take the 38.8 acres and, and you back it out. What, what, is it if, what is it if you take the wetlands out? Honestly, don't know the amount of weapons on the site yet. That will be determined at the time we do a touch photo and have a weapon to win. Um, one thing I will find out on this particular project um, the number of beds that you could have under an RA or can RA in our street zone will be less with this particular plan than you did with other plans. Um, a lot of uh, extra units, but the number of beds and the number of people would be, would be reduced. Um, I'll also point out, as Randy said, you know, the original site was 57 and a half acres, which comes all the way out to Kalani. If you look on here, you may can see. The line that's behind the Savage East School, if you were projected it straight out to the railroad bed, that's this part. And the property between here and Kalani Road, not being affected by this. We do have something to 
prospect purchaser and developer in the arts. He has um, a display or two to show you. And I'm sure you mark them at this way. We will ask for your favorable support on this. Thank you.
we got a mini package that includes all the stuff you may see. Actually, uh, a lot of the stuff that you'll see at the student housing complexes we will have, but obviously it's not the same thing. Uh, so we'll have a, really the goal is to create a community, not just a, not just a, a bunch of buildings, it's to create a community field. So that's really what I've got. I hope I can answer any questions you may have. Where, uh, where have you done this particular site plan for, uh, I guess, this, this type of a building? This is actually, there. we have two projects right now. This one that we're bringing for you, and then one back in Tuscaloosa that we are in the middle of uh, the bank financing. We've actually worked, we're, we're in the process. I hope to break ground in January. Where's the one in Tuscaloosa? Where's it going to be in relation to the university? It's away from the university. It is, uh, I think, I think it's 6.9 miles away from the university. Uh, so tell me, and I should have asked on the last one, that, but what do you perceive the price point per unit to be when you sell them? And I know you've got one, two, and three bedroom, but... Well, they're, they're renters. Okay. And so the rent per square foot will be about a dollar a square foot. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And so and they range from, you know, 750 square feet to 1,100. Uh, if we do some three bedrooms based on what the market study shows us, that would still be a cost of that, maybe not. And every apartment <coughs> will have its own garage? Yes, sir. No matter, no matter the square footage? Yes, sir. One or two bedrooms. One, uh, one or two car garage. And the two bedrooms will have the two car garage. Okay. And uh, just one, one entrance, I see? Yes, sir. And what we normally do is we do a, um, and I think maybe, um, I mean, you mentioned it earlier, we like to have one entrance. We think it's the right thing to do. We usually do a boulevard in there, divided in case you know, fire rescue needs to get in the other lane. We do that. We think it's best for the neighborhood. We think it's best for the residents. And I think uh, John can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the curb cut, where the curb cut is for the county on that road, they didn't, they will not build any more curb cuts. We don't either. So, so there will be a uh, parking space covered per bedroom on this one. So if you've got a three bedroom, you got three spots. Well, or if you no. have a three bedroom, you know, the, we, haven't, we haven't developed that floor plan yet. It would be a two car garage, obviously. We wouldn't have a three car garage. But okay. the great thing about the way they're designed, and, and again, I apologize, but. That one? Slot, yes, ma'am. Okay, so if you see on that floor plan, you see the garages that are basically, you see C1, C1 in the mm -hmm. center. Behind that are with the garages layout. And you can actually, you actually have a park behind your own garage as well. But there won't necessarily be a need for it, but yes. Yes, ma'am, we are. In fact, we discussed that buffer at Planning Commission, and the developer offered to do that buffer, um, and we've included that in the recommended conditions for you all tonight. What about um, uh, the Connection Church and George Beaton? What about uh, those two properties, buffer between them? Was there any discussion about that? No, sir, there was not. Can we go back to the map? I want to look at where the... So we... Well, that would look kind of funny. It does look funny. I apologize. The lines are not property. The dark black lines are zoning 
district, not parcel. Um, what you're seeing in the blue is the entire 57.5 acres. You see that CR portion there that you ask about is five acres across Quanta Road. The um, property that where the, almost the R4 is on your map is about 14 acres that has been purchased by a different group. And it, it's the other part of the property. That, and the, the parcel that was picked up by the other group has been included for you in your packet if you want to reference that. So there will be a buffer between the property and Sally Z. And Bradford Place. And Bradford Place. But not a buffer. The buffer would stop where Connection Church's property abuts or no. I think that's correct. Unless I'm misunderstanding something. The, and I, I believe I'm correct that if you're looking at the parcels that are below the red line, the one to the farthest right is the school, is that correct? That's correct. And then to the left of it is going to be the connection to correct? Yeah, uh -huh. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, on our site plan, we had a 20 foot buffer line. In effect, what it does is it runs. Yes. This is what, uh, when you look at the buildings, in you know, fact, it actually is going to be all the way across. I mean, it's, we're not, we, we, our, we do not have any intention to butt the buildings up. We don't think it makes sense. I think it's better for our residents and the neighbors as well. I mean, to me, I mean, you would have to run your, you'd have to run the buffer all across. I don't know. Yeah. It, it, it wouldn't make sense for us to back the buildings up. So what would you be using for buffer? Have you thought about that? Land, just be landscaping. Okay. So, and what you're telling me is we could amend the condition to say that the buffer would run across the length of that line through? Connects the church and the four feet. John, that doesn't cause the cost, does it? No, that's not possible. Good. We think it's good for everything. We love buffer. <laughs> <laughs> the planning commission actually asked for a buffer that was both landscape and fence. Thank you. That was along the um, uh, Bradford, correct? Or along Bradford, that's correct. And that's not a problem. So do we want to ask for a buffer uh, landscape and fence all the way across? Or? Yes, I would like to see that. And you'd like to see it where it counts all the way? All the way across the connection. And this other parcel all the way out to the front? Is that what you're asking? And I believe that there is, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that the school has a fence already there. Is that it? I think they do. So if it's okay with council, we'll just obviously we'll tie into that and run, run from there. I think it would be on the same line. Yeah. We can do it. Sidewalk. 
to connect to the school? The idea was just to make sure that we didn't block Sally Zerar from reaching the church. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's, the, that's the goal. So if that's the goal in mind, I guess, I guess uh, I'm is, John, you can use that forward, Mandy. If that's our goal, what, what would be the best recommendation? I think the goal was, was that as well, Councilman, to keep this development connected to the school. I mean, there may be families, small families in this particular development, but to get them a walking path to the school is also important as a staff level consideration. Well, would it be, what, what if we put it contingent, I guess, for lack of a better term, that you had discussions with the Board of Education and said, you know, what is your feeling on connecting the neighborhood to the school? How would you, what, what would you feel about doing that? How would you feel that could be done safely? Um, and see if they have a suggestion. Just, I guess, so I understand, we would just basically say we're good either way. And as we're, you know, as we're getting through the process, you guys just tell us which one. Just uh, and let the uh, staff do Honestly, it doesn't matter either way to us. I just want to do the right thing. I think both, we can put a break. It's not wrong. Oh, and, and the school system may say we absolutely don't want it, and then it becomes a non non issue. But if if we're trying to develop these neighborhoods where kids can walk to school and there's connectivity and there's a way to do it that everybody's happy and they're safe, we might want to you know explore that option with them and say, can we do that? And it may be that I don't know Bradford can find a way to come through there too at the same time. I, mean, I don't know the answer to that, but I'd have to look at the plan and see. But you know, if we're going to have that, and we've got. Other neighborhoods are going going to be built next to it. I mean, I don't know. How would you guys feel about? Let me let me bring this up. Let's say a neighborhood goes in next to it. I don't know if it will or it won't. We'll just have to see as development goes. But what if some kids want to walk down there and cut through your neighborhood? I would prefer. You know, yeah, that's going to be a problem. They go to the front and come in. The right, front I, front I got front you. Front. But I mean, that, that could yeah. potentially, if you do a cut through there, it could be an issue. You mean, well, you mean the planned urban development we just approved? Mm -hmm. That neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That one. <laughs> because if they, you know, seriously, if, I mean, their parents are going to be like, why don't you just cut through the neighborhood instead of going all the way out to Kawan Road and, and going that way? I mean, that, that could potentially be an issue. That's the reason I bring that up. Well, from a property management standpoint, I mean, it's, we, we deal with stuff like that on our, you know, already, but it doesn't really matter what you do, you're going to have people that will do that. I'm, I'm good either way. So if we'll just, if it's okay, we'll put in the conditions that, that staff's direction will do it. Uh, it's not a it's not a break, make a break deal for us. That work for me. Man, I got a quick question. If they didn't do a planned urban development, would they um, consider the wetlands as part of the buildable area? In other words, would you figure out density based on the wetlands or based on only the usable space? You determine density based only on what you can build upon. So then, if we're if we're doing the math based on the entire uh, parcel and not taking out the 20 to 25 percent wetlands when you're doing your figures, you're looking at more of a density number that should be around 127 or 140, not 170, which is what you're talking about. So we're talking about. 40 to 50 more units than this property really should be holding. And it's probably even more so on the free, I, I didn't do the math quick enough on the previous one, but it's probably more so. So we're, I'm again concerned about we're putting more, we're just using the planned urban development to cram in density and use unusable space as your green space. I would, and, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I would, I would add to that, Councilman, that I, one reason to use a PUD is to cluster density to allow for green space. That's a common reason PUDs are used. And, and it was a driving factor in the consideration of both of these cases that we'd be clustering a living environment that keeping the green space and the condition on both has been the reservation of open green space, not just wetlands, but open green space for and residential use. And this certainly has some, uh, but, you know, when you look at the green spaces, a lot of wetlands that will then you can't turn that into a park you can't Right, but one of the conditions is that they reserve common green space that is usable for the for the residents. Mm -hmm. So I guess one of the bigger I won't say one of the bigger considerations, but one that, that has to be made is something that we're going to have to come to to grips with on some level is that, you know, this particular area is going to become 
you know, with these two developments, you're looking at more of a rental area than you are of a single family home area. And that's basically what's happening. And what that backs up to Aspen Heights, not literally, but in a way, it does. So as we go down that road, that's, that's what we're creating, is more of a rental district than a single family home district. Um, you know, I don't know that that was initially the, the thought process in 2006. Is that correct? Six and seven. Six and seven when, the, when it was envisioned as to what would be out there. However, um, you know, I don't know that that's not a, a good use of the space either. You know, it is a desirable place. It is a walking trail. You know, young people are going to want to live out there. Like say, some retirees maybe will say, but that, that to me is the bigger, the bigger overarching issue here. And it sounds like based on the CRC that we're okay with doing this. Is that, or we're, we're in a gray area, we're not sure. Yeah, I would say it's exactly what the CCR was, the CCR district was asking for. Mm -hmm. but did you happen to contact the county on this one? Yes, ma'am, we did. Yeah. And did you hear back? No, ma'am, we did not. Okay. I would say that, you know, in 2008, a lot of things changed in the world with the economy changing and the way that things have developed. And, uh, you know, if we want interconnectivity and we want to try these things, you know, you've got to give and take a little bit. So, you know, it's not, a lot of people don't want the basic subdivisions that we're all used to around here, which is the half acre, three quarter acre lots, basic subdivisions. Those have changed. They like the trail activity in green space. I mean, you were saying, Mandy, that um, don't include its own, when you do a density, let's say, for an apartment complex, it's it's usable. That's my understanding, yes, sir. Um, I don't know how to read, I was thinking it was 12 units per acre. I didn't think it would be more developable. So I'm just, I'm asking, throwing that out there at a point, because although it's not a usable space, if you were doing a subdivision, for example, John and if you're doing a subdivision, you know, those, those wetlands count as your so you're doing hard But, but I think it's this acre gets four, this acre gets four. Whoop, can't build on that acre. You know what I mean? It, it's not you can use three and then take these four and cram them over here because then your lot sizes aren't big enough. So I think it's you know four on this one, four on that one. Oh, can't use that one. Can't use that one. Four on this one, four on that. One. That's, that's that was my impression of it. Maybe I'm wrong. I think the plot allows for clustering. Oh, clustering. Right. The plot allows for clustering. Typical development. And this, um, Mr. Bowles is looking up our spelling for next one. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> well, you know that. We have, uh, I haven't asked, do we have anybody here this evening that wants to speak against this application? Come on up, please, ma'am. You've waited so patiently. I live on Kalana Road. Um, I've already voiced my concerns, but I will again. I'm just concerned about the application for the planned unit development zoning in my property. My concerns for the impact the zoning would have on the traffic increase for Kawana Road, the safety in our area, and the devaluing of our property. Also, the safety of the students at Valley Vetter Island Elementary School should be a high priority. Uh, my property does not mm -hmm. look good for SNS and freeway training. Um, and it's supposed to be a area you know, refreshing. And Please in place to own mine. Just please consider all the rest ramifications. May I get you to state your name and tell me exactly where you live? Judy Brandon. Yes, ma'am. I'm on Kawana Road. Um, right by that um, commercial property. The piece is across the street from the school? Yes, look down across the street. That's the corner up there. Um, Get the trail stops up. Uh, Robert, I think it's another issue, and, and kind of talk me through it as well. Um, and we'll see Mr. Wallace can as well. You know, the idea that it's one bedroom to two bedrooms, I kind of get the concept. Everyone has a garage, everyone has this, and this one after. But there's a, 
you mentioned there was a you know, consideration of going into three bedrooms. And then I, I just I wonder if that, for well, one, it does change the detail of it, obviously, by doing the three bedroom and, and it's like a similar floor plan. Then number two is it seems to me that it takes away from the idea of what we were kind of agreeing to do, which is garage, going after this crowd, this, and then all of a sudden now you got two people get they get the car for it and one you know, two get it and one doesn't. So I, I guess and I don't know where we are on that, what we can and can't say about how that works for us. We can't really because it's a it's an apartment, you don't really word it that way. But I guess I'm more inclined for a one and two because I, I get it. The three then changes what I was getting. It's just not it's not the same plug. Because if if you change your mind and say, well, we're going to do half threes, well, now you've ended up with more cars and they don't, they're not like carport. So I, the, the, the look, the very unusual look of the building, which is cool, it doesn't work because now you got a car behind it. It's like, no. Well, and actually, it's good comments. And one of the things that we, this project, the one in Tuscaloosa, we don't have a tree. Um, as we were meeting with uh, staff and as we were just doing our research, we wanted to make sure that we didn't that we reach some people that we might need to, as far as people who just needed that extra bedroom. Um, and you bring up a good point about the, the park outside, but the way that it would, the way that it would work, you still wouldn't see the, you would see the car if you went between the two buildings, because it would be behind the third, their garage. But it's not a roommate situation; it's more of a, you, know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have to worry about, uh, you wouldn't have to worry about parking behind somebody else's garage. So points well taken. The way it looks, you could park behind your roommate's garage. You could park behind your own garage. Yes. Right. And so that's obviously this is not this is not designed to be a roommate situation, right. being the ones and twos. Um, and uh, but you could you, you until you can't rent them the families. Sorry. <laughs> until you can't rent them. That's a good point. But I would say this: um, the other projects that we've done, and, and I don't mind putting this on record and, and doing it. We don't. So um, we, we've done that in other projects, not not focus and stuff like this, but just at other you know, multi-family apartment um, students and professionals and other people just don't really need it. So we do have a problem with it. But the uh, I will say this to your comment. I feel strongly that Statesboro, I was reading some of the staff's comments about it's called micropolitan. I think you've grown, you said you've grown 25% in the last 10 years, and you're the second fastest growing micropolitan or six or something like this. I'm excited. I think this is going to be good. But I didn't ask the right question last time. What is the price for like the region rent for? About a dollar a square foot. So if you've okay, got so one bedroom, give me, it's seven fifty. So about say we'll say seven fifty to eleven fifty, depending on the final square foot. Okay, so that'd be seven fifty for one bedroom and eleven fifty for a two bedroom. And your company <coughs> will uh will rent and maintain all the rooms and the and all the properties. So every plan on selling one off? Well I would you never use the words. I've, I've been told in my marriage yeah. you never use it ever and always. <laughs> uh, so I would say you can't use that, but our, our our plan with this product is a long-term home. We feel like it's a we feel like the senior housing boom and the change from a homeowner nation to a rental nation is coming. Statistics are proving that it is, both for young professionals and for investors. I'm looking forward to being part of Space for a long time. And by the way, we do manage, we, we develop, manage, and all that stuff. So you don't have to worry about a third party management company or a DS me walking out of here getting a deal with this. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um,
do we want to have a motion to approve application RZ 140802, including planning and staff recommendations specifying the buffer to extend the length of the property from the corner, the far corner of Sally Z, all the way across to the corner, which yes, is my S and S railroad bed road. Yes, that's what I understand we're talking about. I, that's, I can't remember anything else that was stipulated. Do I have a motion? I make a motion. Uh, yes, to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Agenda item A is public hearing and consideration of a motion to approve application B fourteen zero seven zero for the Hamptons State for H Jackson Walls request a variance, a height variance. Mandy. Thanks, Sam. This is Mr. Wallace's project that we've referenced on Rucker Lane. It's uh, called the Hampton. It's currently under construction and it has been permitted as apartments at the permissible 35 feet tall or in height, excuse me, or three stories. The intention of this application is to ask for up to 45 feet in height for the building simply for aesthetic purposes. This request would not add any occupancy or density to the project. We have reviewed this with our development team, public safety can service this uh, particular requ request and it is in line with the other height variances this council has previously issued. We'll come on up and show us a pretty picture. <laughs> all right, well, and, and Mandy said, oh, this is all about aesthetics. The architect has designed a this Tudor style development and for the two um, multifamily buildings we have, we just need that. That's the, the top one is what we need. We need a high roof line. We're not adding any more units. We're not adding another floor. We're just literally, uh, we just need, you got to see one of it's, it's a lot prettier that way. And I do know he, he confirmed with the fire uh, marshal and I mean he just said that there were no issues there. So. And you're just going with a different roof pitch, you're not adding another floor? Right? No sir, not adding anything other than the, getting the roof, basically. 12 and 12 and 6 and 12 and 12. Gotcha. Our construction okay. manager. <laughs> Everything else is the same, ceiling heights, all that. Yeah, there's nothing changes. We just, we just basically, we, we, as you can see, it's just a lot. And as we went through this development process and finalized it, we really needed that high roof for that, to get that consistent feel on the property and to get the English to the style. Do we have anybody in the uh, audience who would like to speak against this change in the roof line? We've granted a 10-foot variance before. We have in 1997, a uh, variance was granted to allow additional height to this property to 41 feet, and that variance was not exercised. Anyways. Man, you say what you want to do with uh, the line and all that, and how many hands? Yes, sir, it is. Yes, Ninety-seven was a little different time. Yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> he's a junior councilman back then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> 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 oh my! Just when I thought things were moving swimmingly, we digress. Think Gary's in your district. I, 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 I agree. I want to look through. You support? Okay, so we have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. I don't want to too much time. <laughs> okay. Okay, we have um, <laughs> agenda item nine. 
Public hearing consideration of a motion to approve application RZ 140801, the Islands Phase 3 request a zoning map amendment pursuant to the state's first zoning, zoning ordinance from R4 to commercial retail. I happened to sit at the end of the planning uh, commission meeting for this, so this one is interesting. Yes, ma'am, it is. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, this is the property that most of us uh, know as the island off of Lanier Drive. It's uh, addressed as Aruba Drive. The, there's a portion of that property that is undeveloped, much larger in size than, this, than what this request applies to. They're asking for about uh, a little under five acres of this property to be rezoned from its current residential allowances to a commercial retail. And accepting and working through this particular application, I asked the applicant to consider a zoning that was more in line with what would be considered a neighborhood commercial zoning district. We currently do not have a neighborhood commercial zoning district, so commercial retail was really the only option that they had. We have uh, worked through a number of issues with the applicant successfully, I think. They can speak to that. And we also talked at length about this at the Planning Commission last week. And we have recommended to you, and the Planning Commission is joining this, a, a zoning amendment from the residential district to um, commercial retail with some conditions. And those conditions that have been offered to you in your staff report are intended to get this zoning to be commercial in usage, but designed to allow for a really a mixed use residential work place live area with a small footprint that would be restricted in the conditions to 15,000 square feet, a restriction on drive throughs no drive throughs would be permissible, having parking um, to the rear and side of the buildings as well as to the front of the buildings, connectivity with sidewalks, green space through our tree ordinance, really design an area that would allow the residents um, to access easily the commercial offerings at this location as well as folks from other areas of the city to travel to and enjoy the offerings at that location. This is something that um, at the staff level we have been discussing for quite some time. We have recognized that we need a zone that has use for zones that are not as high in intensity as, um, as our commercial zones currently are. A commercial zone that really would fit into a neighborhood and allow for walkability and um, a, a neighborhood use. We, we don't have that, but we really took this case as an opportunity to begin thinking through that in a very serious manner. And I did pull some uh, neighborhood commercial zoning districts from some other communities. I also pulled a model ordinance from the Department of Community Affairs that is, has some similar intentions to this and really tested through, actually drafted a draft ordinance to compare this particular application to and test this through. So we have recommended at staff level to you all to rezone this and begin to, to really have an opportunity to connect uh, the appropriate residential uses to some appropriate neighborhood scale commercial activity. Um, the Planning Commission did join us in this. As the Mayor said, they discussed this one at length and then joined us in that recommendation. I know the applicant does have some representatives here for you tonight and also some visual aids for you. And I will be happy to take any questions that you may have. Hello, Mr. Maxwell. How are you? Glad to be in front of you today for the record. My name is Joe Maxwell, the Maxwell Director of Social. Here tonight representing Burger Lane, uh, I'm sorry, Islands, Page 3. Uh, we, what we're looking for is a, uh, as Wayne mentioned, commercial shops. We have agreed on all the items in the chat recommendation with the exception of the items. And we have to do the negotiation. The uh, two items that question are the property lines, not allowing the hidden property lines at the shops and houses. Uh, currently, what we have displayed is two drop roofs, one on each end of this complex, and um, we would respectfully request that that stay in the 
the graphics to remain on the concept of the top plane. The other items where you may request is the 50% of the parking fee at the rear of the shopping center. 50% uh, of the parking at the rear of the shopping center really changes the whole shopping center operation of the center. So you end up having to have two fronts. Uh, the restaurants kind of pose a serious problem, it's pretty good kitchen. Uh, frankly, the residents back in the restaurant are probably <laughs> So we don't want to bring our patrons through the restaurant kitchen to get in. So, so we would respectfully request that that be reduced to 25%. Uh, and we're rendering our end of the figure. We have placed some parking in here. And we propose that for uh, employee parking. I can give you some good examples. Uh, some current restaurants here in town. Uh, we have one in Bell Mushroom. We have there at the Hot School. We have one in Savage. There are very few people inside. A lot of the parking is in the rear, but people don't walk from those parking spots. That's the point of drive through so I'm not sure if they're here. As they drive through, doesn't create any kind of issue. But the drive throughs don't necessarily warrant or say that this this bigger shop is going to have a large traffic body for a high end restaurant that has a lot of traffic. It doesn't do that at all. So it does give the developer the opportunity to find leases or leases. For instance, the end day doesn't have very much tax to sell. So what, what could be used for? It's going to be limited to what could be used for. But some good examples of pharmacies, dry cleaners, could be floors, could be ATM, could be a credit By removing that, that takes away all of those opportunities for the developer. If we were going to have a restaurant that had a high traffic volume, we would certainly move it to the other end where cars can wrap around the building and not into the streets. Let me ask you something, because I'm looking at the recommendations that y'all have on there, Mandy. Yes, ma'am. And if you look at rec recommendation two, it looks to me like you're saying drive throughs are prohibited only for restaurants. It's not clear to me that it's just prohibiting drive throughs And it's written the same way for both staff. <laughs> The, the, um, the first sentence does say restaurants, the second sentence is drive through facilities are not permissible. I, I guess if I were to read that, I would not know if you're saying that that is only applicable to restaurants as addressed or if it's applicable to the whole entire uh, development. The intention was to make it applicable to the entire development because drive throughs tend to cause um, interference with pedestrian activities and some safety issues with pedestrian activity. And most of the model ordinances that I've studied in developing this prohibited drive-throughs of all kinds in a, in a zoning district of this nature. So um, Mr. Maxwell and I have discussed this particular uh, recommendation at length, and his compromise offered to me was to restrict the drive-throughs to the two ends of the building. I went back and checked some of the model codes that I used. They prohibit drive-throughs in the development regardless of their utilization. I'm just curious, if, if, if it wasn't in the end, where would it be? <laughs> I'm not sure how the drawing would be. It's Sadly enough, I was thinking the same thing. Right through the middle? Or are you just going through the middle? And, <laughs> if you need to cut that middle out to get your drive through. I did see it. I think I did see that at yeah, one point on this know. concept. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, and we have made some sort of alterations from the rendering of the that actually gives you a 3D version of color. We anticipate that. Now, that's without the modifications from zoning that we work through the staff. The, the Frank's Plaza uh, okay. over a. I will yeah, comment that my, music. that my response to this submission was this is the snazziest application I have received today. <laughs> um, well, I give all credit to my phone. Keep it out of that for me. Um, but as you see, it, it, it is a, uh, it is not, you know, it's, it's a lot of reference to the amazing shopping center in this case. It's a lot of Kmart shopping center. That means the city staff from the years have adopted a new tree ordinance and landscape ordinance that prohibits 
exhibits those top five identities. So we have incorporated all the ordinances that are on the books uh, in this particular layout. And I do understand the staff's recommendations to have um, neighborhood commercial zoning district. And we respect that and we look forward to seeing that in the future. Is that going to have a drive-through in the middle? We can go no, right through the middle of the... That's all. No, we actually took that out. Uh, okay. It was only me. That's going to be a drive-through cut through the middle. And we're changing that to a patio area. In case the restaurant wants to do it. Okay. Uh, my, my client, he smokes. Yep. He smokes cigarettes. So he has a chance that the smoking population, they do not do inside of cigarettes. Trying to accommodate, and there again, the whole team is trying to accommodate all the possibilities. You know, when you're going into this type of venture, it's very difficult and very costly to build such a development and then be prohibited to use the certain conditions. So we, we respectfully uh, request that we could have that stricken from the recommendations that adhere to all the others. That we also have the uh, parking to change to 50% of the community. And Manny, what was the thought process behind it again? Please tell me. No drive through on either end. Pedestrian, walkability and safety. Really connecting that, that neighborhood area around the property to the commercial offering in a safe way. Is there not a safe way to connect it where the drive through would not be an issue? I think from a design standpoint. I mean, Mr. Maxwell's proposal to you this evening is an attempt to get that, to get the drive through with the safety. Um, I did have our engineering team look at it. Um, the comments I got were supportive to, to what we looked at today, this particular offering. I, I think that's a council decision. Mayor, I don't have an objection that to my thought process and that, that I learned from my research with pedestrian safety and walkability are enhanced when drive throughs are prohibited. And what was your proposal to with the drive through so to make it safer? For pedestrians? For pedestrians, well, of course, we would have to consider that for the extent of the presence. If a crazy move to go by, we would have to route any pedestrian drive through. From the shops and the sidewalks there, we would be able to route the Yes, flipping, one of the ideas in the 
think the viewers only to the Atlanta area require the ability to flip the pole inputs when they're in the lower part of the rear of the building when the fronts are in the rear of the building. So it has no interest. And on the back side, you've got to have a lot of time to cut pallets for a long bit of time. The pallets are not here, it's pulling the road. So uh, the customer, our biggest portion, our biggest, her biggest hurdle is finding the stack. So there's kind of a compromise of those, and I think it's a new ordinance that uh, shows huge capacity limits in the region. I think there are some good ones out there. Right now, I'm trying to get by the list, so I'm trying to get by the list. 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 I'm trying to get So Mandy, what is, what is your feeling about 25% um, of the parking space being in back versus 50? I don't have an objection, Mayor. Mr. Maxwell was right. Most of the ordinances of this nature require all of the parking to be in the rear. None of our ordinances currently require that. 25% um, would be a positive start. Okay. And do you feel that one drive through is safer than another. If you were to look at the, the the map itself, if you were to say, when I have to have one drive through, which one do you feel like, from a planning standpoint, would be a safer option? Well, I asked one of our engineers to look at that with me, and the comment I received was that both drive throughs were acceptable. The one that allowed the the four stacking rather than the two is better. And that would be the one, which one would that be? The one closest to Nassau or the one closest to one there? Nassau. Nassau. Because you've got more running back on that end. Okay. So what does council think? I'm good. I'm good with the two drive throughs. I think the Maxwell can figure out where they will make it work. We've got other examples of it in town. And I think if we're willing to go to 25% parking, that's an improvement. Maybe that's something that we, you know, that's our, our new line, our new base, and line of sand there instead of 25%. So I think 25% parking is actually going to, I don't know anything about engineering. So I mean, I just, to me, it seems to put more parking in the back, and then that helps that turn. I still, I'm driving in my mind, I think it helps it somehow. Well, I think your employees end up parking in the back, and so the front becomes your retail, and the back becomes your employees. I think that's how the market is kind of weighed up. And what's the, do anybody know what the percentage is parking behind and in front? No. no. You only know, 25%? Is that workable? Twenty-five percent. What did you say? Till twenty-seven point three. That's correct. Don't get don't get placed on tomato. Don't get in charge of that. He's got a whole sheet over here. He wants to talk about something. I've noticed he's been uh, ciphering over there. So, so twenty-five percent. Okay. So two drive-throughs equals forty percent. <laughs> I mean, as long as we're. I have 35. Do I have 35 for two grand bucks? That was not. Uh, all right, and then do I have a motion from council? To, well, I, do we have a closing? I don't know if we did or not. Anybody oppose? We, I think I asked her. I don't know if I got anybody. Okay. Um, in that case, since there's no, is there anyone else to speak about this? 
Does anyone want to speak regarding this item? Okay. Mr. Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> no, he got three strikes and he's out. He's not yet out. Okay, so then do I have a motion from council to approve the application number RC 140801? The stipulations that two dry foods are allowed in the recommendations as shown on the conceptual site plan and 25% of the parking in the rear of the structure. No less than 25%. No yes, less than. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Any discussion? All in favor, please state by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, uh, item number 10 is a consideration of a motion. First reading of ordinance 2014 2 which is an ordinance amending chapter 2 of the States for Municipal Code regarding authorities, boards, and commissions, States for Planning Commission. Uh, Mandy, can you please? Address council regarding this. Yes, ma'am. In our current ordinance governing the membership of the planning commission, there is not a residency requirement. Uh, so it doesn't speak to whether you must be a member of our community or not to serve in that advisory capacity. This amendment would require residency in Bullitt County. You could be either in the city or the county in order to serve on our planning commission. Uh, no, and what actually brought it to our attention was we had someone that um, had to serve. Wanted to be in here. Uh, no, actually, it's a, it's it's someone in our community who um, is very active but doesn't is not a resident here, and so that brought that to our attention. That when we looked at it, that we did not have a residency requirement. Why the county and the city? I know this is a silly question, but what? What is our basis of residency? Where they are registered to vote? Residency could be defined by where you are registered to vote. Uh, where hey, 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 we all have a friend who's been before us, lives in Florida, according to his tax records. He can't vote in the state really brought it up to us, but it's because of taxes, he doesn't live here. He lives in the city limits. Now, I don't want to cut it, so split hairs here, but what is going to be our definition of residency? You, you tell me, bill <laughs> or a registered voting card, <laughs> or a driver's license, or a library card. I don't know. There is, there is a legal definition of residency that Mr. Lee Clark can. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Oh, <laughs> residency is basically where you live and intend to stay. And uh, I mean, it's where you intend to be at home. I mean, that's about the best way to say it. And it's always, it's always an arguable fact of where you live. You put all, you start throwing all of those facts into the mix, and you call, somebody calls it. Is that your residence? And if you, if you have a home in Florida, and you have a home in Georgia, and you vote in Florida, and you, so you don't pay any income tax and all that stuff, you're not a resident of Georgia. You know, if you've got a home here, and you live here, and you, you take your homestead exemption in Bullitt County, and you vote here, you're probably a resident here. It's, it's always a plus for a fact that you have a permit. Somebody says they're a resident. I was about to say, as a point application, you can ask certain things. If you file your taxes in Florida, You're, you live in Florida. That's right. Oh, this guy does not. He would tell you he lives in State Florida. You file your taxes. Let me reiterate. You file your taxes in Florida. You live in Florida. You pay Georgia income tax. No. And then, you, uh, then yeah, you don't get a discount off tuition, and you don't live here. <laughs> okay. By the way, should this be is it state for or bullet cap? Mandy, did this used to be in the ordinance and it was inadvertently taken out? Yes, sir. And what did it used to be? At one time, the ordinance said city states were and then it changed to Bullet County. Now it's silent. When I first came to work here, it was limited to the city, and we had a very difficult time finding folks within the city who wanted to serve in, in the numbers that we needed. We also um, had a lot of interest from people who live in the county and feel like they have a best interest in about city limits and development here and, and wanted to serve in our planning commission and that advisor role to you all. I mean, I think at this point it would, it would be in the city's best interest to, to allow council to appoint the person they thought would best serve. And for the purposes of planning, given the growth of our county and potential annexations and things of that nature, um, I would suggest that it would be a county advisor. 
which is also a city road, so if they live in the city. Well, that would be my suggestion, but not for a resident, no. And I would I would ask that mayor that every member of the planning commission must come before this body for appointment and approval. And in fact, that's the next item that we'll take up on the agenda. Do I have a motion from council to pass ordinance two zero one four two as stated? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes. Item number 11, how about that? Consideration of a motion to approve resolution 2014-30, resolution appointing R. Jeremy Reagan to the State Board Planning Commission, or should I say reappointment of R. Jeremy Reagan. Mr. Cheshire. Uh, you're correct, Mayor. If you recall that uh, maybe two councils ago, we, Mrs. Cody made us aware that on September 20th of this year, two, two, um, positions on the on the planning commission will come over and uh, she asked both of them if they were interested in being reappointed only one and that's mr reagan that's the one that's before you today and it would be for a four-year term so that would uh, still leave one opening and we've only received one application so far and that particular person is not looking for it so still going to be looking for another one so this will fill one but i would encourage everybody be searching for an additional The point of clarification is Mr. Reagan lived in the city or outside the city? No, I'm the I believe he lives in the county. Just a point of clarification. Just bring a part of the one. All right, do I have a motion to approve resolution 2014-30? Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Then <coughs> item 12, consideration of a motion to award the purchase of a Tomco Street Sweeper utilizing the HGAAC buyer's contract amount 203620, Mr. Franklin. And I want to make this interesting. <laughs> we'll try. Pretty dry. Um, we're recommending the uh, uh, parole ordinance that allows to block the church and the other existing municipal contracts. Purchase of Tempo Street Sweeper, uh, adjacent to the test. We uh, had great success with the plan and we've used it for years, uh, serviceability. Um, we're recommending using the Houston Galaxy. Uh, Area council buying contract. And what this is, is uh, being the fourth largest metropolitan area in the country, uh, it's a 13 county conglomerate, and they, they basically use their buying power to get good deals for them. And I'm sure they get a commission off the contracts once we buy on the contract which we have applied and been accepted. We're not obligated to cost nothing, so we went through this process and then then a lot of the contract number, which we approved and used to buy this machine. Um, again, it's, uh, you know, they go through the same bidding process to state of Texas, apply just like Georgia, procurement laws in Georgia. Um, it's, uh, 13 counties uh, made up of 35 elected officials from these counties. We feel like it's a good price to get uh, the buying power of a lot of larger energy uh, for a good deal. So we're recommending uh, purchase of this through the GAC contract. So it costs $203,620. In your package, you'll see that you know, the rest of the base machine and all the uh, features are added on for contract cost. Uh, what would it have cost if we went to Kmart? Probably, I guess we feel like there's no exact science, but 10 or 12% less than what we do. Okay. Any other discussion? Any other questions? 
Do I have a motion? He did not succeed, though, in making it even more interesting. You don't want to do I move to approve. You do have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Darren. Okay. Item 13, consideration of a motion to award a contract to retrofit an existing refuge truck with a new voice system to consolidate disposal in the amount of $48,387. Mr. Boyles. Yes, ma'am. Um, again, as Darren alluded, this is not a sexy item here either. Um, but um, a worthy one nonetheless. For You've been record. waiting to work, to work that word in, haven't you? Well, yeah. Yeah, for okay. Record. All right. Sorry, look. It's on the record. Yeah, 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 we're good. Uh, okay. Uh, at the May 20th, 2014 City Council meeting, um, Council awarded uh, purchase of a uh, retrofit contract uh, on an existing truck in the same amount. At that time, we received several bids, um, fellow bid, uh, who were recommended to extend the bid to this time again, um, was several thousand dollars uh, below the second bidder, and um, approximately Twelve thousand below our original cost estimate budget amount. Um, I should note that uh, to purchase this truck outright, brand new, would be approximately one hundred fifty-five thousand dollars. But by doing uh, by doing this, this method here and retrofit existing truck, uh, saving us a tremendous amount of money, and um, our trucks are in pretty good shape mechanically from a chassis standpoint. The bodies wore out that the original bid, and we get forty-five hundred dollar trade-in on that. That's, that's Phenomenal. Um, so if you have technical questions. Okay, do I have a motion to approve item 13? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Motion, uh, excuse me, agenda item 14, consideration of a motion to approve the contract. Mm -hmm. For grant of easement from Paul A. Whitlock Jr. Uh, Alvin, please. Uh, this is a typically the city manager or I initiate the easements that are required in the ordinances and charter allow us to do that uh, up to a certain value. Uh, Mr. Whitlock uh, wanted his to grant of his easement in the form of a contract uh, uh, as proven and approved by the mayor and council. So satisfied Mr. Whitlock, we did as he requested and drafted a contract with grant of easement and placed it on the agenda for consideration. Most of the terms you see in this contract for the grant of the easement are, are things we typically offer to induce uh, landowners to grant easements to the city. Typically it's done under a letter from the city manager to the landowner and then an easement document is executed. Just to, as I said, we satisfy Mr. Whitlock. Um, we place this one in a contract here. And one of the things that we were going to bring this in front of council last time, but we had an issue with the language, and that's what I wanted you to kind of touch on, because the initial language said that we would be able to provide a water and sewer to that property. But in thinking through that, we were afraid if they put, a, you know, what was it, a Budweiser plant, but we would never be able to provide enough water. And for that, what, so based on what we're running out there, so that the point was to go back and look at that language and make sure that it's something that the city could provide through the system that we're installing. Is that correct? That's correct. And basically, what we did is we warranted to Mr. Whitlock that we had entered an agreement, the uh, intergovernmental agreement with Fulton County, that we entered to extend the water system, add certain specifications uh, for the capacity of the water and sewer system, and that. Uh, that's, that's the kind of capacity he would be receiving in his parcels. So we didn't promise him anything we haven't already promised before. We promised uh, Bullock County we would build a water and sewer system with certain specifications to deliver a certain amount of water to that area. We're just giving them a couple of taps, right? We're giving them a few taps. Um, Three taps, one sewer, right? That's right. Three, three, one, three, three taps, one. one sewer? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right, three water taps, 
So we're not giving them any free water, we're not giving them any free service, just just the tap, right? That's my understanding, that's correct. Which would normally cost what?
county may have already made that. And that's why it's sitting right out? No, I appreciate that. Yeah, I think you're from county. Uh, All right then. Do I have a, the, any discussion? Any questions from council? Motion approved. We'll run through it. All right, do I have a second? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, any discussion? All in favor, please say by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, we move, we pull item C out of the consent agenda, so let me go back to that. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. The only reason I asked to pull it out is just somebody okay. to go through and say, we did this, this, and this, thanks, right now. I got you. Uh, per Councilman Britt, we did pull that, and let me tell you what that was. That was a consideration of a motion to approve resolution 2014-31 which is the resolution setting the mileage rate for property taxes for the 2014 calendar year for the city of Santa Cruz, Georgia. At 6.358, let me just share that we have had three hearings per law, three uh, hearings regarding setting this millage rate. Um, so we have it here to what we need to do to be able to vote on that today. Is that correct, Mr. Ketchum? Yes, ma'am. Okay, do I have? Three hearings, two attendees, what about that? Well, we had one person that spoke, but they didn't. It, that one it, it wasn't even to do with the village, right? It was, it was a positive comment. It was a positive comment. Yeah. All right. Did you, you share? It was positive for me. Well, I think I was there for that. They like your tie? Just say they wanted, no, just said they want to start becoming part of the process and just realizing and looking at what we did at the city, and uh, this was the first meeting they were going to attend. So, not to make a comment per se about the military, right? just sure. we're here for you. 100% of the audience, that's awesome. Yeah. You did it. 100% participation. <laughs> we did. It's all supported. Uh, do I have any other discussion from council before asking for a motion? Okay, do I have a motion? Uh, make a motion to approve resolution 2014 31. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please state by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, we'll move to uh, agenda item 16, which is other business from city council. So I have a couple of things, but I will certainly open up the floor to council to see if anybody has anything they'd like to bring up at this time. Just sad to hear the passing of uh, Tony Blitch. It's a beautiful service. He was, he was a true public servant. It's very nice. Very nice service celebrating his uh, life and what he contributed to the city. And just have one quick thing for, I uh, just wanted to recognize Jason. I know I'm coming back from the SCBB thing a little late, and I, I assume you did your presentation. Uh, I think you did. Mm -hmm. What are you doing there? Yeah, okay, good. Anyway, um, <laughs> you asked but I, uh, I, I literally was having almost like an off-the-cuff conversation with him, and he took the idea and, and ran with it and said, hey, by the way, I'm going to do this to council, and so I just want to give him kudos for really uh, I mean, he, I didn't even really hand him the ball. I just metaphorically talked about some ball in the future, and he still grabbed it and ran with it. So I appreciate you're, it. You're still on the hook Yeah, I'm working on it. It'll be a Partridge Family Bird in there. I have no idea what you're talking about. No, you do Partridge Family Bird, but nope. I'm just It'll be fabulous. It'll be fabulous. A um, couple things I wanted to bring up. And let me if I forgot something. I wanted to talk about at last council meeting, I had suggested that we look at amending the alcohol ordinance before the implementation date of, a, of more of an overall ordinance that we've been discussing, uh, July 1, 2015. And since making that comment, I've actually had a, one conversation with Councilman Chance a little bit about uh, a couple things, and I asked um, our attorney, I've been leaving part about that as well about doing that. And one of the things we found out is we've gone through the last two or three weeks where we've been applying our ordinance in a difficult situation. Um, we realize that there's some nuances that need to be vetted that are ferreted out or however you want to put it. Some definitions of some things that weren't entirely clear um, that we need to figure out 
as a council and as an ordinance what what they mean so i think at this point we probably need to look at going back to the hearing process i know that councilman chance mentioned that he would like to try to push forward the overhaul of that ordinance and not, not wait for it to go into effect when i mentioned that to um alvin he said we might have some problems he needs to look into that some things may need to go into effect before others or can't go into effect until july 1. so i'm going to ask him to look back into that i know that we have a very busy um uh, a very busy agenda it appears to be on october the 7th is that our next meeting and so i think a number of public hearings administrative hearings are scheduled for that i'm not sure who and how many resulting from some of the, some citations that have been issued. All right, there it is. Um, it looks like we've got six. Is that right, Ms. Okay. Scheduled for October 7th. Um, so I'm going to ask at the October 7th meeting once I have some clarification from you, Alvin, on what we could do as it regards going through and looking at an alcohol ordinance going into effect January 1. I don't know the answer to that question. You're going to check that out. Is that right? Okay. Maybe we can answer it at that time and then look at scheduling another public hearing for the purposes of looking at the ordinance to be held in October. That's what I'm going to suggest. Do I have any suggestions from council regarding that? And we can again, like I said, broach that subject at October 7th about setting a date. I think that's it. Do we have any other business from council before the city manager makes his comments? We have tavern. I'm sorry. Do you have tavern? We have tavern. Are you talking about in the apple ordinance itself? Council members? Yeah, that's all. Do you have tavern? I think that's no, just no, the that's name. just the name. That's oh, just okay. what they call it. Okay. That's a good question, though. Yeah. Just never that. But now I believe that's what it's called. Do I have any other business? Okay. Mr. Fisher. Just two brief items. Uh, first one, you mentioned the passing of uh, Mr. Blitz, but also uh, Ed Cohn, who was a longtime city engineer, passed away this weekend. He was 96. He was, uh, he was pretty amazing. Uh, I could go to him when I first started as a city engineer, and he he could remember where a bow was, you know, under a tree, mm -hmm. and uh, so, you know, he'd say, you know, "Watch out! There's a there's a mean dog close to that bow." <laughs> <laughs> so, he was amazing, so I'd like to mention him as well. And then uh, recognize Sue's uh, city clerk for uh, notification of alcohol license. Yes, yes. Um, I just want to make a point that. We're in the process of reviewing an alcohol application for Adam Burgamy, which is going to be one of the managers at the Ocean Yacht Express, which is located out at Stadium um, Plaza. I don't know if you have No, Don Corleone spot. The old Don Corleone spot. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so you get you a beer and fried shrimp. Same place. Anything else? Ms. Sue, did anybody uh, ask to make a public comment? No, ma'am. Okay, in that case, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.